Hello everyone, how's it going? Today I wanted to give you a tour of my desk setup and my home office for 2021. For those of you that have watched my setup from 2020, you know that it used to have a lot of different things in the walls, a lot of guitars, posters, and it had a lot of personality. But that being said, it was also kind of distracting and maybe slightly kiddish. So for 2021, I wanted to tone it down a little, maybe even make it a little bit mellow and moody because um, I like that dark tone, dark environment. I tend to work in the dark most of the times. I like foggy days, so that's kind of my vibe. So that's what this video is about. But before we get started, I wanted to mention two quick things here. First is that none of this you need to become a good software engineer. Throughout my undergrad and my master's, and even through some of my early jobs, I had this ancient HP laptop that didn't even run properly and I had a chair that I bought for $16 from Target and I could still get most of it done. So do realize that none of this is actually necessary for you to become a good software engineer. There's a very distinct difference between wanting something and needing something and all of this is in the want category. And the second thing is that I see a lot of talk around productivity desk setup. To be honest with you guys, I don't even know what productive desk setup means because it's not your desk that makes you productive, it's your time management skills and your discipline that makes you productive. So please don't think that this desk setup is what makes me productive, it doesn't. That being said, I have designed this room to be a place where I can spend a lot of time, something that inspires me to be creative, work harder, but also take breaks and relax when I need to because your mental and physical health is as important as working hard and getting things done. With that said, let's get started with the tour. At the heart of it all is my desktop, which is powered by a 3.6 gigahertz Intel i9 9900K CPU. It has 32 gigs of RAM, three terabyte of M.2 storage, and an RTX 2800 Super. This hasn't changed much since last year. I don't use this for gaming. The only reason I've spec'd it so high is for video editing. Again, you don't need something this powerful for editing, but it definitely makes your process much faster if you have something like this. The case, which people ask a lot about, is the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Razor Edition. The next thing I get asked a lot about is my monitor. This is the Samsung CRG9 49-inch ultra-wide 120Hz monitor. If anything in this desk makes me productive, it is probably this screen. It does get some getting used to at first, but once you get the hang of it, it really helps you manage your screen real estate effectively. They generally advertise this monitor as two separate 27 screens without a bezel, but I use it in many different ways. For example, when I code, I usually have the code in the center, the terminal on one side, and the debugger on the other side. And if I'm editing video, I have Premiere Pro taking about 66% of the screen, while the rest is used by Audition for sound editing. I use this app called Display Fusion to create quick Mac so that I can put screens in almost any configuration I need. If you need something similar for your Mac, you can use an app called Spectacles. One of the two things right above my screen is my webcam. Obviously with COVID and work from home, a webcam is a must. This is a Logitech C922X. It's a 1080p webcam and does its job well. Right beside the webcam is the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. It is an on-screen lamp that not only illuminates your desk, but also greatly reduces eye strain. I'm not a fan of putting lamps on my desk, so for the longest time, I didn't have one. BenQ reached out a couple of months ago asking if I wanted to try this and I've used and loved it ever since I got it. It senses your room's ambient light and your screen brightness and auto dims to adjust the optimal brightness to reduce eye strain. It is USB powered, can illuminate up to 500 lux and can adjust to eight different color temperatures. So if you're like me who loves coding in the dark, you'll love this. It costs around $130 and is available on Amazon. And like with everything else in this video, link will be in the description below. Speaking of USBs, the USB dongle that I use use is called Hyperdrive Gen X. I think it's now available on Amazon, but I got this through Kickstarter as an early backer. It's a solid dongle, works with all my devices. The ambient lighting you see behind my monitor is the Philips Hue Play Bar. Like I said before, I don't really like too much RGB, but I don't mind some subtle ambient mood lighting. If you're wondering where all my guitars went, I now have a dedicated music studio, so I've moved them over there. I use this room now to make engineering videos, work on my projects, and relax. More on the relaxing part later. And these paintings were made by my sister. They look good, but also act as acoustic treatment for this room. Speaking of speakers, these are the Atom Audio T5V studio monitors. I'm a huge audio person. I'm not kidding. I probably have over 30 speakers in my house. This room alone has 15 dedicated speakers. That's not even counting the headphones. Also, I play and record a lot of music, so I always use reference-grade speakers and studio monitors. 
They are more expensive than regular speakers, but they produce a very flat sound signature, which is great for mixing your audio and also reduces ear fatigue if you listen to loud music all the time. While we are talking about sound, might as well talk about the headphones. I do have some noise cancelling headphones, but I don't use them when I'm working here. For the desk, I have the Audio-Technica ATM50X. It's a little worn out, but it sounds great. I only use headphones when I'm mixing audio. I prefer speakers when I'm listening to music or watching videos. In the same context, the mic I use for my desk is the Shure SM7B. I'm sure you've seen this mic a lot. It produces the classic radio sound with a tight low end and scooped mids. I use a different shotgun mic for my videos though. This is an XLR mic and my studio monitors also need balanced XLR connections, so I need a preamp and an audio interface to drive them. For that, I use the Focusrite Scarlett 4i4. This has one of the best mic preamps in the industry for the price point. I actually have a couple of these, one for my office and the other one for my music studio. My keyboard is the Razer Black Widow Elite mechanical keyboard. There is no particular reason why I picked a Razer. A long time ago, my mentor at work introduced me to mechanical keyboards and gave me his Razer to try it out. I loved it and I have used Razer ever since. They're good. I don't know if they're the best. I don't obsess about keyboards that much. My mouse is also a Razer. I think it's called the Basilisk Hyperspeed Ultimate. It's rechargeable. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I use my mouse less than 10% of the time. Some days I'll be hours into work and my mouse will still be sitting on its charger. Using a mouse is not very ergonomic and anything you can do with the mouse, you can usually do with the keyboard. I also have my iPad lying around here most of the times. It is the latest 512 gigabyte iPad Pro 12.9 inch with a magic keyboard. I use it to take quick notes or jot down ideas and also to reference my discussion topics when I'm recording videos. I also get asked about my desk a lot. The base of my desk is from Autonomous. It is a really sturdy base, can hold up to 300 pounds and can store up to four different sit stand settings. The top is a countertop from Ikea. It is called Carl B and is 74 inches wide and 24 inches deep. Also, I never really sit down when I'm working. I like standing and especially when I'm thinking, I like to walk around the room. One thing to note about standing is to make sure to keep moving, change positions, walk around a bit, and if you get any fatigue, sit down. Your stamina builds gradually, so it takes time. Like I said, I don't always sit, but when I do, I make sure I sit on my Herman Miller Aeron chair. Let's get this out straight away. This chair is expensive. If you customize it with all the options, it can cost up to $2,000, but I don't treat this as an expense. Instead, I treat it like an investment for my back. Before I started standing, I used to sit for hours, but my back never had any issues on this chair. My advice to you is to never skimp on two things, things that affect your back and things that affect your knees, because if any of those get injured, they will cripple you. Moving on to laptops, I have two of them that I generally use when I'm traveling, and depending on what sort of project I'm working on, I'll either take my 16-inch MacBook Pro or my Surface Book. Both are specced to the max, with the Surface Book having a dedicated GPU in the keyboard base. So that's it for my desk setup. But like I said before, this space isn't designed just to be my office, but also something that inspires me to be creative, motivates me to work harder, but at the same time also enables me to take rest, take a break and sort of combine working and uh, relaxing together. So I wanted to give you a tour of rest of this room to kind of show you how I integrate working hard and relaxing or having fun all together at the same time in the same room. So the TV is LG, it's an OLED 65 inch screen. It is a couple of years old and I think the model is B9. For sound, I have a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup. That's a total of 13 speakers for the surround sound. I told you this room had a lot of speakers. They're all reference grade Klipsch speakers. I use Klipsch because I like their horn loaded tweeters that produce a very distinctive and warm sound. They're powered by my Denon AVR 4500H receiver. My projector is a popular 4K model from Optima. I actually don't remember what the exact model is. For gaming, I have the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo. Nintendo Switch. If you're wondering how my PS5 is matte black like the Xbox, the video where I customize it from its default color to look matte black is in my lifestyle and blog channel where I share all of my non-engineering interests. Feel free to peek in there if you're interested. So like I said, the main idea with this space is to be at the desk when I need to be laser focused, but when I need to do casual things like answering all your questions on Instagram or hanging out with you on Discord, I relax on my couch. If I have a total mental block, I'll watch some videos or just play a quick game Oh. <laughs>
or if I'm completely tired and done for the day, I'll just watch a movie. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tour and I hope that this place gives you ideas to create your own space that inspires you to be creative, work harder and remember to take care of your mental and physical health as software engineers. I'll see you in the next video.